what's up guys my name is Julie and this is the curated curvy thank you so much for returning to my channel and today I have for you a what's been sewing on video before we begin all of the what's been sewing on this of this video I just want to briefly explain my absence so if you did not know I am a teacher I live in the state of Texas and I've taught here for one year since I've been here. After that one year, I decided to come back into the home full time to tend to my children and my household. Um, we just bought a new house. It was a big move for the kids, yada, yada, yada blah 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 so I was home for two years and this year I decided that I would go back to work it was really a last minute thing like I just woke up and I was like oh maybe I should look for jobs so I put my resume out there and as you all probably know there is a massive teacher shortage I got swept up pretty quickly um maybe a little bit too quickly because I hadn't fully thought out what working outside of the home would look like for me I thought it would be like this seamless transition it was not it kind of like rocked our worlds really threw off our schedules our rhythms and our routines and i've been trying to kind of get that back in order i can't say that i've been very successful um i mean for people who work outside of the home with small children you know it is definitely definitely a it's a thing it's like a juggling act and so youtube had to take a back burner hopefully i'll be back making consistent content we'll see i don't know but i'm here today to show you what i've been up to recently so now let's get into the reason you all came the clothes so in my absence even though i haven't been making youtube videos i have still been sewing i actually did two craft fairs which was a very very um massive task to take on but also a really cool learning experience i've never actually gotten to watch anyone interact with the things that i make and so that was probably the highlight of both of the craft fairs was just having people touch and try on and interact with the things that i produced with my own two hands it was really really cool and i enjoyed that a lot i actually think i may try and pick up one more craft fair before the craft season is over but we'll see i'm going out of town literally tomorrow and so I don't know if I'll actually have time to do that, but in a perfect world, I'd pick up one more before the season was over and done with. So I made quite a few things for the craft fair that I'm not gonna detail here. I'll probably just throw up a shot of like my booth and whatever that looks like. And if you guys are interested in like what that looks like, I do have a good bit of footage of me preparing for the craft fair and then a little bit of footage of me at the craft fair. So I could put that all in a video for you guys, but I really don't wanna do that if no one's interested. I understand that I've been absent for a while, so it's gonna take some time for the algorithm to like pick back up and start pushing out my videos again so if you're interested let me know if not it was great it was an experience I enjoyed it I did it now again second time the clothes so aside from sewing for the craft fair I did some sewing for myself I have a few things that I want to show you on the garment rack this has all been over the process of maybe like the last two months so for me I feel like it's not a lot because this would usually be about a month of sewing for me but Okay, so that's it all, right? It is what it is. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm usually not this rambly, so I don't know, maybe I'm a little rusty. Work with me as we get back into it. Let's start with what I am wearing. So I am wearing a cardigan that I self-drafted myself. It is heavily based off of the Simplicity cardigan that I made and made and made a million times over. However, that cardigan had quite a few fit issues that I just couldn't figure out how to work around. The neckband never quite fit right. The length was really funny. Like if it was low, if it hung properly in the front, then it was too short in the back. The sleeves were also not fitting the way that I wanted them to fit per the pattern envelope. And so I continued to tweak the pattern and it just felt like it with every tweak something else is being thrown off so i went ahead and i pulled out one of my pattern making books and i tried my hand at drafting my own and i feel like for the most part i was pretty successful there are still some fit issues that need to be worked out but i really really like this cardigan so much so that i made quite a few this was one of the things that i made to sell at the craft fair that i was attending both of them and this was actually my best seller not necessarily in this print but this cardigan so i made a ton of them for for the craft fair and then I made a few to keep for myself so I have this one that I am wearing now which is in like this blue it's a knit fabric but it doesn't have like a ton of stretch in it I also made it in this maroon this is my most worn and washed one I absolutely love this one. Oh my gosh guys I even made my own little tags can you see that how cute is that it has like the little laundry instructions on it yeah so I also made it in a brown these are the ones I kept for myself. And then this one 
was like an experimentation so it's the body of the cardigan and then it's a puffy sleeve from another pattern the sleeves are a lot on this one and I'll explain how this one came to be but all in all I have four of these cardigans I do like to layer them over dresses or wear them as a standalone piece so I'll usually just do up the third button if I want to wear them with jeans and then wear them with jeans or I just throw them over a fitted dress like this and this is kind of like my go-to uniform these days especially for like this cooler cozier fall weather this pattern also sews up pretty quickly like I sewed these two and I think about like a half a day like it doesn't take that much time at all the most consuming part is like the buttons and the buttonholes so it's a really fun make I think I might make a few more of these to give to my sisters for the holidays because I absolutely adore this next I made my staple mock neck t-shirt I made a ton of these last year or not a ton I made like four of these last year out of the four that I made surprisingly only one actually stayed in my wardrobe the other three were the fabric choices were just not good I'm lying two stayed in my wardrobe but I only consistently wear one of them the other three the fabric choices just weren't really good for the t-shirt so I took my learning experience from that and I made sure that when I'm making them again this year I'm choosing the right type of fabric that I prefer to wear with this type of mock neck shirt so this is a polyester rayon knit and it's really soft it has like a t-shirt like quality so it's not very clingy like your brush knits it doesn't have that like soft fuzzy to the touch feel it feels very slick if that makes any sense but I really like the fit of this and I just I adore this print this fabric I got from a local fabric shop Dallas warehouse fabrics here in Texas and I bought quite a bit of it so I have this and I have another shirt out of it and I think I still have enough left to make a dress out of it if I want to so I might end up making one of these dresses which I will talk about in a second but this is the McCall's pattern um next I have and this shirt this is the dove sweater by dressmaking amore i don't know why when i bought this pattern and i'll put up a picture of like the listing i thought it was a t-shirt pattern it makes much more sense that it's a sweater pattern based off of the fit i got it because it has these really cute bell sleeves and you know i'm a sucker for bell sleeves it has a really nice high collar i thought it would be more fitted and more cropped with this pattern or with this pattern company i have found that i'm definitely gonna have to size on at least two sizes per my measurements on their chart that puts me at a 2x but I've made two things from dressmaking a more and both of those things are really like they don't fit me very well so I think I need to size down it could just be you know even though we have like a standard set of body measurements the way that like weight falls on our body varies from person to person and so I think that's the issue that I'm having um with these patterns but I like this shirt it's really cute and it's really cozy like I said it makes a lot more sense that it's a sweater and not a shirt <laughs> because it fits like a sweater so I would like to sew it again in a sweater knit I think that'd be really cool but then I wonder about the bell sleeves on the sweater knit I don't know if that would work so yeah I don't know I'm kind of thinking I want to keep exploring this pattern because I bought it and I really want to get it to the point where like it fits me the way that I hoped it would fit me when I purchased the pattern but we're not there yet anyways it's really cute this is like a ribbed like a very very lightly ribbed knit from joanne fabrics in this gorgeous like pumpkin spice color it is so soft the inside of it is really smooth there's no ribbing on the inside so it's just really smooth it's a heavier weight it has a lot of drape and a lot of body to it which I really like I actually sewed something up in this fabric before it was a remnant and I paired the wrong pattern with the fabric so that garment is no longer in my wardrobe but this one I am definitely going to keep it's really cozy it's really warm I did a lettuce hem on the sleeve and I lengthened the sleeves by one inch because I just wanted them to be like really long on me what I didn't take into account was the fact that there is like a seam allowance for a hem on the sleeve so I really didn't need to lengthen them so when I sew this again I will probably go ahead and take that extra width um extra length out and just leave the sleeves as is but continue to finish it with a cute little lettuce hem but it's a look that I really enjoy wearing so I feel like it's worth it. Next I have the petunia blouse from Schultz Apparel. I saw someone on Instagram who I follow on Instagram and on YouTube make this. I will link her channel or like put a picture so you can see her channel up here on the screen somewhere but as soon as I saw her post I was like yes I need that pattern. It screamed like my type of staple like my basics are not ever really like basic like 
I like pattern, I like color, I like print. So something like this shirt would be like a basic for me because I could wear it as a standalone piece or I'd wear it as a layering piece over my pinafores. So as soon as I saw the pattern, I went ahead, I purchased it, I printed it, I made it, here it is. It is actually in the same print as my mock neck t-shirt. Okay, cool. It has these gorgeous, gorgeous puffy sleeves. They come down to a fitted cuff on the bottom. It has the front, which is one piece, and then the back, which actually has a seam down to center back. And this seam does a lot of shaping as well as the side seams on the pattern. And then it comes as a turtleneck or like a high neck. I shrunk it down significantly to just have like this little baby collar here if you've watched my channel before you probably know i do not like high necks on me like on a shirt like this where it's supposed to fit kind of like oversized and sweater like it's fine but if it's something fitted like what i'm wearing right now i prefer to have a lower neck just my style preference so i went ahead and i shrunk down the neck uh, quite a bit it also called for a facing on the neck and on the front and the back of the neck pieces i didn't include that i've sewn enough shirts like this to know that as long as i like press it and serge it I'll be pretty good to go so I omitted that. This is another really really quick project to make. The only thing that takes a little bit longer as opposed to most t-shirt patterns is that there is gathering on the top of the sleeve and on the bottom of the sleeve. I really really enjoy this. I really enjoy wearing it. When I first made it, um, I don't pre-wash my fabric which usually doesn't come to bite me in the butt. Sometimes it actually helps in a case like this because when I first made it the sleeves are really really full and I think they're a tad bit long on me and I didn't do a mock-up so I didn't know that so they were kind of drooping over the like cuff not kind of fitting like this like where you see like this is the ideal sleeve for me where you feel get that fullness but it's not like hanging over the cuff so these sleeves initially were kind of hanging over the cuff and when i washed it it did shrink up a bit and now it fits perfectly so good to me but yeah i absolutely love this i don't know i think i want to make another one and probably like an equally busy print i have some more of this fabric that i'm wearing right now and i think this would be a good um option for another shirt like this and again this is the petunia blouse by schultz apparel Next, I have another one of my mock neck tops. This is done in an ITY knit, and this was a last minute scraps project because I made some pants out of this fabric, which we'll talk about next. After I had made those pants, I had a few pretty large scraps left over, and so I was like, let me try and squeeze out a top um, out of that same fabric, and surprisingly, I was able to do so successfully. Everything went pretty smoothly. Um, I just had to cut the back and make it two pieces. You can see the seam here on the inside. And then the sleeves are actually going in two directions. So if you see this sleeve, the dots are going down the sleeve. But if you look at this sleeve, the dots are going across the sleeve. That's something that literally, if I never told you, you'd never know. But I'm really happy that I was able to use those scraps and get something out of it. If you haven't noticed, I'm using a lot of the same fabrics. Because I am really, really trying to stop having such a massive like scrap spin i don't know if that, i don't know how to say that better but i collect a lot of scraps because i sew a lot and it's starting to feel a bit wasteful because it gets to the point where i have so many scraps i don't know what to do with them and i don't feel like happy like with the idea of just throwing them away but there's also like no creative reuse center near me where i can donate my scraps to so i'm trying to get into the habit of using my scraps to create more things even if it's like not necessarily on grain even if i have to modify the pattern a little bit just using up those scraps so that less and less is going into my scrap bin that just gives me more of a peace of mind when it comes to sewing so with that shirt i was really proud of the fact that i was able to get all up to get an entire t-shirt out of the scraps i did have to change the way that i put on this or that i cut out the sleeves and i also had to shorten the pattern quite a bit so it's not quite cropped but it's not as long as my other t-shirts all of those things are perfectly fine in the end i got a shirt that i can wear and i'm very happy that it, all of that fabric is not sitting now in my scrap bin waiting for something to become of it so like I said, that was actually done because of the leftovers from these pants. I'm not going to take them off of the hanger because I'll throw in a shot of them. But this, these are, I want to say the jade pants. I feel like I'm getting them confused. I think this is the dove sweater and these are the jade pants. Also by dressmaking a more, they're just a pair of wide leg loose fitting pants with a really 
two inch waistband. They do have inseam pockets, which I omit it because I was doing this in an ITY knit and I feel like ITY knits are really like slinky and heavy. And if I were to put anything in those pockets, it would just kind of pull the weight of the pants down more. So I chose not to do that. These pants are actually intended to be the mock-up for the pattern. I've had this fabric in my stash for quite some time, never really knew what to do with it. And so I figured it would be a nice fabric to do, like I said, for a mock-up of those pants because I have some brown ponty knit that I would ideally like to make those pants in. And I'm glad for once I did the mock-up because the waistband is not seamless. Again, the size that this pattern company has me at does not fit me correctly for whatever reason. So I ended up trying to take in the waistband a lot, even though it is an elastic, it was still too big on my waist. Um, so I ended up trying to take it in. And what happened as a consequence of that is I got a lot of puckering on some sides of the waistband. Uh, it's not really showing up because it's a busy print, but I can see it when I put it on, especially we're going to focus on this side. There's a lot of puckering up there. That's not necessarily like gathering, if that makes sense, because on some sides it's more smooth than on others. And when I look at the pictures that they have of the, the pattern on the listing, it just looks a lot more seamless. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. I haven't really given it much thought. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. How do I shrink that waistband down a little bit, even though it has the elastic in it, if that makes sense. But I really do like this. And when I pair it with this, it almost gives like the illusion of a one piece. So that's really cool that I can wear these together or I can wear them separately. All in all, I am happy with the pants. I just want to figure out or think through the waistband situation before I go ahead and make it in that brown ponty knit that I have in my stash. All right, we are officially at the halfway mark, which brings us to the dress that I'm wearing. So the dress that I'm wearing is McCall's, I wanna say it's like 8560. No, it's not. McCall's 8040. <laughs> Not bad either. McCall's 8064. McCall's 8064. In this dress, I call my Fat Mata made me do a dress because I was watching Fat Mata of traditionally inspired meaningful art and she was going over some of her recent makes and this dress kept coming up. And I was like, mm, that looks cool. That looks interesting. I love a good like knit, like mock neck fitted dress. So I was feeling where it was going. When she like did a full body shot of the dress, I just thought that the way that it hung over her frame was so beautiful. I'm always looking for like full body dresses, especially in knit fabrics that aren't too clingy around the midsection, but still shapely enough to accentuate like my curves personally. And so, like I said, when she stood up and she showed like how the dress hung on her frame, I was like, yep, I paused the video. I literally paused the video, got in my car, went to Joanne's, bought the pattern, came back home, pressed play, and proceeded to cut out the dress in preparation for sewing it. And it did not disappoint. I did have to tweak the dress a little bit just to fit me the way that I prefer things to fit me. So I ended up taking it in a little bit more on the side seams. And in the first one, I have it flared out a lot more over the hips, but in this version, I calm that down a bit. So this version is in a, what is this? It's a brush knit that I picked up from Warehouse Fabrics in Dallas, Texas, and I really, really love it. It's in obviously like this ditzy floral, this cute blue thing. I did change the neckline, so the dress calls for a lower like scoop neck. I have the pattern here. So these are the neckline options. This is the version that I made and you can see even still the neck is lower. So I wrote, I brought the neck up a few inches and I brought it in a few inches so that I could have like this mock neck effect because I know that this is going to be a fall winter dress for me. Um, that was a pretty easy tweak. And then for the first one, I wasn't paying attention to the cutting layout. So like I said, I did this view here, which as you can see is the shorter dress but I actually wanted the length of view D. So I didn't catch that in time. And when I cut it out for my first version, which is this dress, it was cut out as a shorter dress. So it falls a little below the knee. Not ideal, not as long as I like my dresses to be, but still really perfect. This one is in this gorgeous, gorgeous jacquard knit that I picked up from Joann's when their knits were 50% off. How beautiful is that? Like it is so, so stunning. When I saw this, it took a lot of restraint not to like buy the whole entire bolt because 
if you can't tell I've been on a kick of like making multiple things in different print or in the same print right now but anyway I did it by the whole bowl I think I ended up getting about three and a half yards which was more than enough to get this dress out of this like I don't know I can't say enough about this fabric it's just really pretty on the outside of it the print is almost like a gauze fabric like it has a lot of texture and then on the inside it's just this smooth fabric this stuff is amazing i absolutely absolutely love it it'll be interesting to see how it washes and how it wears i've only worn this dress once but it is very very warm very soft very comfortable it'll definitely be more of a winter dress for me i can imagine finding like some cute like colored tights to put underneath it with a pair of like my boots i actually think that's how i wore it when i wore it the day that i did originally this dress had different sleeves on it so this this is the sleeve that came with the pattern but originally it had this sleeve on it which is the petunia blouse sleeve from Schultz apparel i just thought it would be a really fun look however it was like overpowering the dress so this is what it looks like with the puppy sleeve and i feel like it's just too much i don't know if it's the print or just like the sheer volume of the sleeve but I'm gonna go ahead and take the sleeve off and exchange it for the sleeve that the dress originally came with. And I'm gonna save these sleeves. I felt like it wouldn't be so overwhelming to my frame as it was on the dress. It's still a lot of sleeve. It's an, this is another one where I'm hoping that if I wash it in hot, hot water, I'll get some shrinkage um, when it comes out and hopefully it'll be a little less overwhelming, but we'll see. But yeah, that is the first 8064 and then this is the second one so with this one i went ahead and i lengthened it quite a bit like i don't remember how many inches but i lengthened it enough to the point where it's like hitting my lower calf which is how i prefer my midi dresses to be i don't i mean i've said it before i don't like the in-betweenness of dresses either it's a long dress or it's a short dress but that's pretty much how i roll i don't need anything in between this one i also attempted to do like a baby bell sleeve but it didn't really work out that way so this is the sleeve here. Um, so I flared it out just a little bit on the pattern piece. I think I needed to flare it out a little bit more. And as you can see, I lengthened it because again, I like my sleeves to come down a bit more. And I finished it, are we gonna focus? There we go. I finished it with a satin stitch. And I also finished the hem of the dress with the satin stitch, which I think I can show you without flashing anything if I stand close enough to the camera. So there you go. Do we focus? I don't know if we're focused or not. But yeah, I finished the hem of the dress with the satin stitch also to give it that lettuce hem effect. I love this dress. I've worn this dress quite a few times already. Um, when I first finished making it, I was a little worried that I took in too much at the size. I know also that the brush knit is kind of clingy, so it's sticking to my midsection a bit more than I would like it to. But I love this dress and I've worn it a ton and I'm going to continue to wear it and hopefully I can make at least one more. What else do we have? Okay, the next one I have is a vintage pattern. This is Vintage Simplicity 8520. Go ahead and I will, I, <laughs> I will go ahead and link my pattern review for this situation up here so you can go ahead and check out that video because it is already live on my channel where i go over all the details so i'll spare you this was in collaboration with rochelle of rochelle handmade designs for vintage member sewing and i really pushed myself on this this is not something that i would usually go for in terms of silhouette or patterns but i'm very happy that i did i really like how it came out it's a really fun dress to make and it was it was modestly simple to put it was not simple but it was easy it wasn't easy it was doable Putting it together <laughs> was doable. Go ahead and check out that video if you're interested in the details. The next three dresses that I have are all self-drafted dresses. Um, so this is the first one. This is in a vintage 1990s print that I picked up at a street sale for creators um, where they were just reselling like some of the fabric in their stock that they hadn't been using. And I don't know about it. It's like, I don't know. I like it, but I don't love it. I've been having like this thing right lately. I'm trying new things again and I have to remind myself that usually when I do this, I need to mix in like some tried and trues because oftentimes like trying new things for me like is not the way. Like I kind of know what I like right now. I know how I want to look and I know the fit that I'm going for. So exploration usually doesn't lend itself to me that well or at least to my satisfaction. Anyways, try this. It's a really long midi dress with a short ruffle on the bottom, has some short puppy sleeves and a pretty thick collar, has a little like square 
bib bodice situation that cuts a little at the upper bust and then a really full gather sleeve this one also has really long ties on it so that can like make the way that i wear the dress optional i can tie it in the back i can wrap the ties around the front i can do a crisscross tie around the front it's like the ties make it more versatile i haven't quite worn i haven't quite i haven't worn it yet um it's just been kind of sitting on the rack every time i try it on i just i don't know I don't know like I don't know if it's me or maybe it's that it's not I don't know if it's me I just don't know how to style it in a way that would make it feel like me because my style is so simplistic have you guys a side note have you seen like the thing on Instagram and social media now where it's like wearing versus styling and they'll like put on something and then they'll like accessorize and layer and it's like this whole really like cool intricate look I'm the wearing girl all the time in real life like I am basic give me simplicity that's all i'm after that's all i want i just want easy and so <laughs> when i get things like that i think the issue is that i'm not styling it correctly but i don't really know much about styling i just try and make sure that i have solid foundational pieces and those usually carry me through so that's the issue i'm running into with that dress so it is the same with the next dress but not quite so this was the leftover fabric from this and then this was a fabric that I picked up to pair with that dress that was all originally going to be the neck shawl piece and the sleeve cuff but I didn't like it for that dress pattern however I did like it for this pattern and I like the top of the dress the problem is is that this fabric ran out and I didn't have enough for a ruffle and I don't like this ruffle situation I think on the hanger it looks cute but I'm like looking in the mirror here on the hanger it looks cute but on me I'm not really satisfied with the look of it so I think what I'm gonna do one also there's a few issues the sleeves are too long they need to be shortened or the cuff needs to be shortened I'll probably shorten the cuff so that I don't have to reconfigure an entire sleeve I'm gonna go back to Joann's and I'm gonna see if I can find more of this fabric and then just do the ruffle in this print they only had a little bit of this when I bought it so I might not be able to find it but if I can't find it, I'll probably buy more of this fabric and do a longer ruffle. I think that would balance it out a bit more. But right now, as it is, it's not working for me. Also, with this one, I wanted it to be like oversized. This is the same dress pattern. I wanted it to be oversized, so I put a lot of ease into the bodice piece and it was too much ease. So with this one, I attempted to correct that and I overcorrected. it. So now it's just really fitted and it's not as much ease as I would like. So that's something that I would like to be able to go back and change. So it's done, but it's not like done perfectly. I still wanna tweak it and make it a little better. And this is the last thing that I sewed. This is also a self-drafted dress. It's really simple, it's a smock dress. So it has like your basic bodice block. Um, I did include darts in it. It has a puffy sleeve that's not gathered at the bottom which I think needs to be because this fabric just kind of falls flat it doesn't have a lot of volume and then it has like a basic gathered skirt I really like this dress it's really simple it's really cute I did like a keyhole in the back to finish it so that I didn't have to put a zipper on it and it came together really easily it was an experiment I can't say that I'm like a thousand percent thrilled with it but it's interesting enough Okay, and that is it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to see more videos of me talking about all the things that I've made, then go ahead and check out this playlist. And I'll see you next time. Bye.